Guybrush? Guybrush. It's not Graybrush? No, it's Guybrush. I've been reading it wrong the whole time. (laughs) Welcome to My Hill to Die On, episode 22. Everyone has things that they're passionate about. Things we want our friends to try and experience. So we've convinced each other to try different things. And we talk about these experiences to see if we can get just one more person to join us on our hill to die on. It's got to be one of three things. Either you've died, or you're not wearing your watch, or you're playing games on your couch so quietly and so not movingly that you get zero calories every day. (laughs) Oh, I have not been wearing my watch because I keep forgetting (laughs) to charge it. No, no, I I like the third option the best, that you're just playing games on your couch without moving a muscle so that you get no calories during the day. I I like that one. I really hope not because, (laughs) among other things, I am going to the gym every morning. Uh, Well, most mornings, at least five days of the week. Good, good. I also hope not because, like, the past month, maybe month and a half, I have really been dealing with so much health anxiety. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That, like, I'm being overly paranoid about everything. That's probably on the safe side, yeah. Well, except for the fact that it then makes me anxious and anxiety does things that are awful to you. And then you convince yourself that you have other things based on the anxiety symptoms. Uh, And, you know, telling yourself, hey, maybe you shouldn't be anxious is probably not going to, you know, work. mm -hmm. So that's basically where I've been stuck for, like, the past month, like, obsessing about nonsensical things all right funny crazy story of how bad i I got near the like the tip Mm -hmm. of the fingernail right before it turns into the white nail Mm -hmm. there's that little space where it's a little bit darker than normal Mm -hmm. you know where i'm talking about right Mm yeah for some reason i had convinced myself that that was new that Mm -hmm. i had never had that before And then I ended up on WebMD. My brain is going through everything that I could potentially get, even though I am positive based on all the other symptoms that I don't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But my brain is telling me, hey, but you might. (laughs) And so that's basically been where my brain has been for the past couple of months really Mm -hmm. which is why i have been very good about making sure that i am staying in the gym and being healthy good 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 i say that except for the fact that today's eating habits were not so great yeah me neither but yeah i ordered a pizza that's not too bad we had mcdonald's oh i ordered a pizza and ate basically half of the pizza for dinner And I also am convincing myself that I did okay because I figured out that if I order a half and half from Pizza Hut, it's actually Mm -hmm, cheaper mm -hmm. than if I order a regular pizza. Oh, and then you store half for the next day? Yeah. Good idea. Store half for the next day. And when you do the half and half, you get two different varieties. And so I go for pepperoni and I actually go for Hawaiian. Hawaiian's not bad. The corn's a little something to get used to, but it's not bad. Oh, I take the corn off. I don't like (laughs) corn on pizza because that's an abomination unto the Lord. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but the Hawaiian has pineapple and onions and ham. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you get three separate food groups right there. <laughs> You're golden. <laughs> and if you get the cheese crust, it's dairy too. Uh, yeah, except when I get the cheese crust, I have to take my lactate pills. Oh, yeah, that's true. that's true. All this to say, my brain turns in on itself and does horrible things, and then I become anxious, and then the anxiety turns into me having other symptoms which then convinces me that i am actually dying i have a funny story about the half and half okay it's called half ando half here right yeah one of the ladies in our office at our school she went to order and one time she said i want you know han to han Mm -hmm. han in japanese being half and to meaning and so han to han means half and half so that's what she asked for and they just did not understand her they couldn't han to han what's han to han (laughs) <laughs> and she's like, she's like, okay, fine. Half to half. So half and half. And he's like, what are you talking about? And she goes, fine, f- fine, fine. Half and a half. And he's like, oh, half and a half. Yes. <laughs> she's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, she, she had to work all the way back to, Eng- the, 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 to, to the, the transliteration of English to get him to understood what it meant. Yeah. So, well, to, It's funny because to us, it's, to us, it's a phrase. Mm. To him, it's a word. Yeah. 
to them, it's this is the word that means they want different things on either side. <laughs> well, the thing that makes that stand out the most to me is I remember when I worked at a Japanese public school mm-hmm. and the students were needing to give me a speech, basically. Uh, they were needing to do a presentation. They wrote their speech on note cards. And at one point, I got a chance to look at some of my students' note cards. And it was all basically written as romanji Mm -hmm. like in romanji characters but as if they were transliterating from kana uh mm -hmm. so everything was hello my name is first they wrote it in kana and then they wrote it in romanji Mm -hmm. so their entire speech was written in romanji like that like it was a transliteration from the original speech. Original Japanese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the original Japanese. So the reason why this stands out to me is because that was the moment where I realized this student is doing this to pass the class. They do not actually understand a single thing that they are actually saying here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're memorizing facts. They, they, They are memorizing sounds, not even facts. Yeah. They are memorizing... I need to make this sound with my mouth and then this sound. I don't know what I'm saying, but it will let me pass the class. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. Some rainy season we're having, huh? Oh, yeah. I feel like every time I go outside, it's raining. Mm -hmm. That's because pretty much it is. (laughs) Let's be fair. Outside of going to the gym and restaurants and grocery store, I haven't gone outside all too much. Mm Mm-hmm. So, you know, your snide comment earlier about me uh, not leaving the house and (laughs) sitting around playing video games all day is probably not too far from reality, except I am trying to do other things as well, which is usually when I'm at the restaurants, though. Mm -mm. It's raining a lot, but I think, I mean, I haven't looked up any news on this, but it does seem to be raining more than previous years. Hmm. But it is keeping it nice and cool, I think. But I think when it breaks, like next week or the week after, it's going to get pretty hot and stay hot all through September. I've already given up on, like, my air conditioner is running basically 24-7 now. Mm, It's so humid. It is. And today was the day where I basically almost never left my apartment. Mm -mm. There are reasons, which I will talk about later. But the moment I stepped out into the hallway this afternoon, oof. It was just muggy in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sun had come out in the afternoon, so all of the rain drying was making everything very sticky. As for why I stayed inside all day, I figured out that I could get our main media of the day to stream to my PlayStation in a different way than I thought I could. And so I went, oh, well, I'll just play through the entire game today. Mm -hmm. And, you know took me about four hours, but I got through the whole game. Hmm. (laughs) Clearly, I've played the game before, and I did refer to a guide every time I was like, I can't remember what I did next. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it took me about four hours. Not bad, not bad. Took me a little longer. Okay, we'll get to that later. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that later. (laughs) So anything new and exciting? How did your deck come around? Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it finished pretty quick after our last recording, actually. We haven't done much with it yet because, again, it's been raining so much. Yeah. So we're kind of hoping to do some stuff with it pretty soon. But we haven't bought furniture for it yet, and we're still going back and forth. We don't want to buy anything too big. Again, once you buy things in Japan, getting rid of them is really tough. Oy, so you're telling me. So we don't want to buy anything that we're going to regret. So we're really trying to think about what kind of furniture we want so we've gone back and forth on some ideas and haven't quite settled down yet and we're still figuring that out gotcha i've been spending most of my time now programming i've been working on my grading project Hmm. and i've been doing a lot there and it's coming along take a look now because i am pretty proud of how it's looking oh yes Yes, this is exactly what I was hoping. It, like, this is what I was envisioning it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I really think this is looking real slick. This is missing a handful of small things. It needs a, a saving mark 
because actually one time I did reload the page before it was done saving and I realized, oh, I probably should put a saving mark so I can tell where it, when it's saving still. I'm really liking this. This is fantastic. This is what a lot of teachers would probably want. I'm fairly pleased with how it's turning out. More work to go. <laughs> Always more things to do. And this hasn't even touched on the, like, the admin side. Oh my goodness, there's going to be so many screens there. Yep. But it's loading pretty quick too, right? Oh no, it, it's fantastic. Like, And this is all off the mini in my house here. I'm not wired in at all. My Wi-Fi is in the next room and it's almost instantaneous for me. It's shaping up nicely, but there is still... Yeah, you are right. There is still more work to do. I will be fully fair and say that I have been less effective with my time than I was hoping for. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've gotten situated in my new apartment. I've had a lot of adjustments there. I've been doing a lot of other things. I have made progress in small ways in all of my other categories of things I wanted to get done. But I think it's because I've been so I've spread out my focus on so many different things that I haven't gotten one thing significantly progressed. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's still early in the summer. We've still got time. I know. It just feels like it's been because it is July. It feels like it's been a lot longer than it has. Mm -hmm. Even though I know that it's been like three weeks, technically. Three weeks of vacation, yeah. I have more to do and I have to get there, but I'm making progress. Due to the nature of our main media of this week, being a computer game that I played as a young lad, we decided that for our pick two today, we were going to pick two nostalgic computer games that we played when we were younger. Games that were near and dear to our hearts and all that. So, the first game I am going to pick is the King's Quest games. This was a Sierra, I think. Yeah, it was Sierra-based entertainment. They were other point-and-click adventure games. And... I'm just picking King's Quest in a general sense because King's Quest was a game that I played a lot growing up, and I don't really remember which ones I played growing up because I played all of them, but at different points in my life. Hmm. The person who actually introduced me to the King's Quest games was actually my grandma. Whenever I went over to her house for holidays, I would regularly go and play computer games with grandma. And so one of the games that she had was King's Quest. And I made my way through many of those games on her computer, trying not to take up too much time on her computer because I was visiting their house. And it's kind of rude to be the grandchild who comes over to their grandparents' house and goes, okay, I'm going to go into your computer room and never see you for the next two days. <laughs> so, but yeah, I played a number of them growing up. There has been a a reimagining of it pretty recently of that series, which was interesting. Some of the choices they made in the storyline was not the choices I would have made, but it was an interesting take on it, especially because it was told from the perspective of the king who the story was all about, Graham. Mm -hmm. The newest one was told from his perspective as an aging man who was basically losing his mind. And so some of his stories that he was telling were slightly different because he was retelling the story to his granddaughter as his mind was starting to slip. And that's mm -hmm. how they did the reimagining one. It was interesting, but... So, so it was different. It was different. Yeah. So probably the ones that I remember the most, though, were, I would say, probably the first three. King's Quest 1, 2, and 3 were the ones that I remember the most. Because those were the ones that Grandma had. Mm -hmm. Eventually she got the other ones, but those were the ones that I remember the most. So it was like Windows 95 game or something? Like that? Uh, the original one was in 1984. So DOS? So, yeah, DOS. So floppy disks. Yeah, they were all floppy disks. 
And then I remember as I got older, they went up to, yeah, MS-DOS, Windows, yeah. Yeah, it was basically a lot of point-and-click adventures, though. Hmm. But they were very interesting stories. Opposed to the game that we played today, the Sierra games were very vicious. You could die and die very easily. Hmm. So it was a very interesting take on that because there was those games and then there was also like another one was like Space Quest. Um, Then there was a Robin Hood one. All these were made by Sierra and extremely like it was so easy to get yourself killed. Mm -hmm. which as a young child, probably not like the least stressful thing, (laughs) but great games. There's a police quest too. Yeah. So yeah, King's Quest. Great, great game that I remember playing a lot. All right, my turn. I think I'm going to bring back one that I've already talked about a little bit, but that is starting with the original SimCity. But then also I'm going to bring along Sim Tower 2 in my pick. I Sorry. I'm bringing two in. Sorry, Ryan. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. As, as long as you have another one. No, I do have another one later. Keep in mind, I just took the three. That's true. First three King's Quests. Yeah. Sim City and Sim Tower. The original Sim City was something I remember playing on our original classic Macintosh. I think we had a classic two, a Mac classic two, a nice boxy machine. And SimCity was a great game to play. Got to get all those little cars, got to avoid the traffic jams, right? In fact, when I had first come to Japan, they had just finished building a train crossing, Fumikiri, mm-hmm. actually the one near your apartment. And the business manager at the time said to me, oh, it's just like in SimCity when you built a new road and all those little cars disappeared and everything went smoothly again. I was like, oh, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very clearly <laughs> in my mind, like, oh, yeah, that's exactly the problem that's solved. Yep, I completely understand. But yep, SimCity, uh, clearing up cars by building up more roads and uh, getting traffic flowing again. And I remember building little R's, C's, and I's everywhere, getting my R's, C's, and I's balanced, and then trying to build the nice R's next to the rivers. I have no idea if that made any difference, but I de- definitely did it all the time. Mm. Uh, R's for residential, C for commercial, and I for industrial. Yep. And building your nuclear power plant all the way off in the corner so that when it melt down, it didn't affect the rest of your city. <laughs> Uh, happened to me a few times. <laughs> Maybe that was more foreshadowing I should have expected. Oh, well. Maybe. But Sim Tower also, uh, I spent a lot of time on Sim Tower on my... Eventually, at, at some point, we picked up a Macintosh LC with a nice color monitor that I used most of the time, and I played Sim Tower on that a lot. In fact, I would leave it running through the night to gain more money. Because things moved very slowly back then. So Mm -hmm. you would leave it running overnight and you would gain more money. Yeah, I talked about the Sim Tower back a few episodes ago. Yeah, you talked about Sim Tower because you had your like 100. Yeah, my 100 story towers. I found them (laughs) and loaded them up and they still work. (laughs) And I still have my towers and I can load them up in my emulator. So, yep, quite fun. See, my problem here is I have several that I want to talk about. And I'm not sure which one you're going to pick next. Okay, I I don't think you're going to pick mine. Really? I don't think so. I'd be pretty surprised. I think you're going to pick then, since you're concerned, Oregon Trail. Oh, no. Ah, I thought about it, but no. See, the problem is there are so many games that I thought about that I could do. Mist? Mist? Mist is good. I never played it when I was young, though. The problem is I only played that when I was older. Uh, That's another one I played at Grandma's house. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. There was, oh, when I was younger, I I went to a game store and bought a computer game that I thought looked really cool and ended up playing a lot of time in it. And it was, um, I played uh, Icewind Dale, which is a D&D game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wonder if there was another one that was getting a little bit further into the future. I played a game called uh, Neverwinter Nights, which was another D&D game. But that one was, I think, yeah, that was 2002. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit older at that point. See, the problem is there are just so many that I want to talk about. But you know what? I'm going to tell one that has a good story behind it. Mm -hmm. Because I am going to tell you about Doom. (laughs) Doom. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to play it much. So I'm all right at first person shooters, which Doom is. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of them, but 
I bring this one up because it has a good story behind it for me. Because when I was in high school, which was very far past when the original Doom came out, I was in a class that was our computer science class. Mm -hmm. We actually had an AP computer science class. So we in this computer science class were very effective students who were always on task and following all the rules. Mm -hmm. And as students like that, we hit a copy of Doom on the school servers. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So basically what we would regularly do is we would finish up all of our programming assignments as quickly as possible so that we could log on to our secret copy of Doom and have a LAN party in the middle of class. (laughs) And we would do this every day of the year until the very end of the year after we had all taken our AP computer science test. Mm -hmm. And as a small aside, I'd like to state to all of the college board people that the AP computer science test is the worst test you need to change it and fix your c- because the AP computer science test, if it is the same as it was when I took it, you do all of your programming on a computer for the year. And then when it comes to the test, they give you a sheet of paper and say, hand write code that does X. So you don't get to compile it. You don't get to do anything else that you've gotten so used to you have to hand write java code to do something remembering every bracket and every semicolon right right exactly anything that any interpreter and compiler whatever would give you a warning immediately and you'd be able to correct it immediately Mm -hmm. and get it right so that is my small side so after we finished that since there was nothing else to do in the class because we had already taken our final test of the year and we still had about two months left of the school year, we basically logged on to our copy of Doom and played it every single day. The teacher, of course, knowing that we were doing this every day and not bringing it up, but also not being a complete idiot, decided at the very last week that he would log on and play with us. Oh, uh, yeah. During the last week, I guess, huh? Yeah, it was the last week of school, so... But yeah, it was it was a very fun experience that we got to have as a class. I remember those times fondly. But again, I'm not a huge first-person shooter player, so it is probably the only first-person shooter outside of a couple of story-based ones that I would ever bring up on this show. Mm-hmm. Honorable mentions, of course, would be Mist. I love mm-hmm. Mist. Uh, had a lot of good times playing that as a kid. Oregon Trail. Yep. And if we want to go a little bit further into the future, I would say I really did like the Icewind Dale games, Neverwinter Nights games, because those were my first experience with the D&D systems. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, I might have been influenced by a little bit. That brought you into that. Yeah, it's interesting. So you played it there first before you actually played it with people. Yeah, because, you know, in many circles growing up, D&D had that very bad connotation. Mm -hmm. People equated it with a lot of things due largely to chick tracks, Mm -hmm. which are a unfair assessment of it. And so, yes, my first experience with that world was through computer games. Well, my second one will have to be Lemmings, which I don't exactly remember what computers I played it on. I was wondering if it was Apple II's. But I don't think it's Apple II's. I think it was probably the Macintosh Classic mm. and and the Mac LC and things like that. I didn't. Well, I played this at school, in the middle school where my parents taught sometimes because I was waiting for them to be done with their work before we would go home. Mm. So I'm pretty sure I played this at school some there too. So that's what I'm trying to remember. If if I was in middle school, they had Apple II's still in the lab. So I'm wondering if I played this on Apple IIs. Uh, because after I left middle school, that's when they switched to Macintoshes. I think they switched to like that Molar Mac, the weird looking one, before the eMac. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think I played this on Apple IIs. But a lot of fun. 
I love the different lemmings and trying to figure out the logic of which lemmings you needed to use where and how to how to play them. But yeah, lemmings is a fun game. Yeah, I really loved playing lemmings as a kid too. So not one of the ones that definitely jumped straight into my mind, but I spent a lot of time playing lemmings. Mm-mm. As a small aside, a lot of games tried different things to prevent you from basically pirating games. And so a lot of times they had like codes and they had things like that. So I am going to include a link here. When you had the original floppy disk of the game that we are going to be talking about in a little bit here, to log on, you had to use the dial a pirate. Dial a pirate? Yep. So once you load it up, you'll see it's basically oh, yeah. a, a, a code wheel where you will have to match up the faces and based on that they'll give you a city and you have to say what date that pirate apparently they said it died in that city so for example if you put the creepy guy with a sword halfway through his head and oh, this works yep sorry yeah it actually works so you can actually somebody made a version so you can see what the codes were Oh, wow. So if you still have a floppy disk out there somewhere, you could potentially use this. That's great. So there was this, and of course, if you played Monkey Island 2, they also had another one. Mm. But everybody lines up at the same spot. Yeah. I thought not everyone would line up together. No, they basically line up together. They're a little off, but yeah, they basically line up together. Fun, fun. So that was how they prevented DRM on Monkey Island. It's hmm, a good way. When you bought the game, they included this dial a pirate is what they called it. Cool. And without it, you would not be able to play the game. If you lost the wheel, you would have to purchase another. Ooh. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. There were a lot of different ways that games prevented things like this. If I remember right, ah, yeah, there was one for Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Mm-hmm. That was another LucasArts game where Indiana Jones was trying to figure out the fate of Atlantis. Well, I was trying to think, I didn't spend too much time playing games as a kid. We would get CDs from Mac Addict Magazine, which had a whole bunch of shareware on it. And I would download that shareware and try it out. Mm. Like I would do things like that. And then I would take as many icons as I could collect and organize them into folders and collect them and then never did anything with them. Yeah, I played a lot of games growing up. A lot of my hobbies were indoor. Mm. I had that. I played a lot of games. I, I read a lot of books. When other kids were like, let's go out and play sports. I was like, what is sport? <laughs> what is this thing? What is, what is this sport? So, Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm might thirsty. I'm thirsty too. I am very parched. I don't think this is going to taste like grog. No, no, I, I don't think this is going to taste like grog either, but... That's probably going to save our tummies though too, so that's good. Well, you know, I don't plan on drinking anything that melts through a pewter cup. <laughs> so this is pineapple? I think it's pineapple, but the kanji at the top means salt, so that worries me a little bit too. I wonder how salty this is going to be. It's going to make us more thirsty at the end. A salty pineapple thing. But this is nachan, right? So this is the fruit drink. Yes. But the fruit nachan is not 100% fruit. In fact, this one's only 10% fruit. Only 10%? Yeah, there it is. How big is this bottle? It's a tiny bottle. 425? 425, is that what you're seeing? That's what I'm seeing. That sounds about right. So it looks interesting. I'm a little scared. Nachan orange they have at at um, drink bars, and I've had it once or twice, and it's very sweet and less orange. <laughs> I'm wondering if they took away the sweetness of nachan and put salt in, and then there's going to be less pineapple. So I'm very curious as to what this thing tastes like. But there's been a whole bunch of summer drinks mm-hmm. on the display at the local supermarket. And this is the one that seemed at least semi-acceptable. <laughs> so I'm hoping this one's okay. The other ones were even not weirder, but like just like, wow, you're going to drink that? Uh, so this one seemed okay. So I bought it. All right. Well, let's try it out. Let's give it a try. Tastes like pineapple, actually. You know what it tastes like? Mm-hmm. It tastes like you got one of those cups of pineapple from the supermarket. 
where it's already diced up Mm -hmm. and all the juice that's at the bottom of the pineapple cup, you've just drunk that. Yeah, pretty much. Because that's almost exactly what I'm tasting. Basically pure pineapple juice flavor. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, pineapple juice flavor, yep. It's pretty strong. It tastes thick. Oh, yeah. Even though it's not very thick. It's got that kick at the end, too. Yeah, the flavor is just right there. I'd say it's about a five. Out of ten? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe as high as six. It's not wonderful. It's not wonderful. It's not bad, though. Mm Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's filling because the thickness probably doesn't... No. It makes me feel like I want to drink more. Is that the thickness or the saltiness? I don't really taste the salt. I don't taste the salt either. Maybe at the very end? Is that what the kick at the end is? Because it almost tastes a little bit like Aquarius or Pocati Sweat. Oh, that might be it. The salt is the kick at the end. That's the Pocati Sweat taste. Yeah. Pocati Sweat is a sports drink here in Japan. Yes. And it's as bad as it sounds. It's not sweat, but it's close. If you're going to get a sports drink, just go Aquarius. Yeah, just get the Aquarius. Don't get the Pocati Sweat. Unless you want the experience. But brace yourself. It's an experience. Yeah, I would say... I'm leaning towards a five. Yeah, I'm leaning toward five now. <laughs> it went down <laughs> now that I realized what the salt flavor is. Yeah, it's a five. That's why it's the summer drink. Because they want you to have your salt when you're standing hot in the, in the summer. It's on the Pocati sweat side of things. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's going down in your opinion, huh? I got to the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe we should have shaken it first, huh? I think I should have shaken it first. Because I feel like I got all the salt at the bottom. Whoops. <coughs> I was getting thick there for a second for me too, so let me see if I saved my drink. The end, it was not a very, not a very... Not a pleasant ending. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just... Let, let my, let my brain... Because <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> I, I've, I've now dropped this to a four. Yeah, I think so. I think it dropped to a four. <laughs> Keep drinking it. The score goes the, down. The more you drink it, the lower the score is. <laughs> well, because the funny thing is, the pineapple's not bad, right? No. The, I think the pineapple part is good, and that's what hits you first. Yeah, and, and the thing is, it, the very top of the drink basically was like, oh, it tastes like I'm drinking pure pineapple. Great. <laughs> I can get behind that. And then I got to the end and was like, Oh, I should have shaken this more. <laughs> now I'm tasting the Bacardi sweat part, and it's like, oh, goodness. Yep, yep, yep. I completely agree. <laughs> we're ending on a four on that one. Yeah, we're ending on a four. So where are we today, Ryan? Look at the day. Today's main media, we're going to talk about the secret of Monkey Island. Oh, wait, you mean the game that you asked me to start playing at the beginning of the podcast when we started episode one, that one? No, I believe I waited until at least episode three before I suggested that you start playing this game. <laughs> play this game? <laughs> oh, I should look to see where my saved games are on my computer because I dated my saved games so that I could track. Uh, my first saved game is from September 16, 2019. So yeah, maybe it was second or third episode. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> So I asked Nate to play The Secret of Monkey Island probably after the third episode of this, because as you can probably guess, I'm a bit of a gamer. (laughs) Since we're doing this show where we talk about things that we love and we want other people to experience, I wanted Nate to experience some of the games that I love. The difficulty is finding games that he can play with the availability of systems and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, I chose to have him play one of my favorites from when I was a kid, which was The Secret of Monkey Island, which is the first of the Monkey Island games. And yes, there are more of them. (laughs) I can always have you play Secret of Monkey Island too. You just wait for it. I think it came. I loaded it into my simulator also. I didn't open it up though. (laughs) LeChuck's Revenge? Wait a minute. How can LeChuck still be alive? Okay, never mind. Sorry. We'll get get to that again. So... Since it is a older game, I will provide you with a bit of a summary. So for those of you who either haven't played the game or it's been so very long that you can't remember, let me provide you with a bit of a summary. The Secret of Monkey Island centers around a character named Guybrush Threepwood. Guybrush Threepwood is a man who wants to become a pirate and begins the whole story with basically undergoing the three trials to become a pirate. 
as he goes through these trials, he comes to meet and get to know the governor of the island, Elaine Marley, who is then kidnapped by the ghost pirate LeChuck. The rest of the game is Guybrush basically chasing after LeChuck to the island named Monkey Island, where he then goes to infiltrate LeChuck's base, rescue Governor Marley, and then save the entire island from the oppressive nature of the ghost pirate LeChuck through fighting him via holy root beer? <laughs> the, the oppressive nature, you mean the fact that they play music at all hours of the morning? <laughs> all hours of the morning. <laughs> Sorry. Strongly worded letters back and forth. <laughs> Uh, The last thing I should probably mention is the fact that the game ends with Guybrush defeating the ghost pirate LeChuck through the use of said root beer and causing the ghost pirate to explode into fireworks. Very pretty fireworks. Very pretty fireworks. (laughs) First things first, your impression of the game. Well, I think actually one of the things I thought was that you mentioned earlier that it was three parts. I didn't learn until just last few weeks ago that the three stages of becoming a pirate weren't the three parts (laughs) that I thought, oh, I had already completed one part because I had completed the sword fighting. But no, 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 no. I completed one part of part one. (laughs) Yes. And I will be fair. Part one tends to be one of the longest parts. That, That is true. If you know what you're doing, part two can be done in like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Part two was not bad at all. Part three took more time. But again, that's because you're exploring all of Monkey Island at that point. Yeah, I was exploring a bunch of things, yeah. Exploring your own ship was very quick. Yeah, because there were like three or four screens that you can go through. So not bad at all. My overall impression of the game, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I was definitely realizing that this is not my kind of game. (laughs) For a few reasons. One of the largest reasons is, if I play a game, I need to be able to be immediately taken out of it to help with whatever kid emergency is happening at the moment. Gotcha. Or to answer a question or things like that. Because there was at least five or six times where I was playing this game and somebody needed me that moment and I'm standing there trying to read what somebody's telling me and then I'm walking away missing it, right? So that was just driving me up the wall. Because it's like, no, I can't, I can't read you, game. You're going too slow. Because even there was one time where the package delivery man arrived, and I said to my first daughter, you come and read this and tell me what he said when I get back. I was in the voodoo place again, learning my future. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, goodness. Like, I want to know what he's going to say. And he's not coming back because I've done that in the voodoo shop. You go in once and he doesn't tell you again. Well, the funny thing is, You can beat the whole game without ever going into the voodoo shop, except for, like, grabbing the chicken. The chicken, yeah, you need the chicken. You need the chicken, but everything else is just, like, extra. Mm -hmm. So, my biggest problem is, I just don't have the time to sit and play a game like that. Yeah, I get you. I mean, I will be fair and say, like, 90% of the games that I enjoy, I enjoy because they are large story-based games which mean that they are a bit more of you do need to invest that time yeah yeah this game was fine it was fine to play it i loved the humor the humor was very great uh, all the time and that was a large part of why i wanted you to play this is the humor of this game is where it really excels Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the fact that you go and you dig up the treasure and it's a t-shirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and even the sword master gives you a t-shirt too. Yeah. Two of the three quests that you end up doing to prove that you're a pirate end up with giving you a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And interestingly too, I think I played it a little bit out of order. I became a sword master mm-hmm. before I found the hidden treasure. Mm. And I think you're supposed to find the hidden treasure first because actually I didn't even know the whole Governor Marley thing. That the Governor Marley was going to fall for Threepwood until later. Like I only learned that like two weeks ago in playing this game because I had done the whole sword fight thing without any playthrough at all. Like I had gotten the money, gotten the, I had gotten the treasure map, but I hadn't gotten the treasure. 
Uh, and then I had gotten trained and met pirates along the way and then beat the Swordmaster without any playthrough. And then I started needing to read playthroughs because I just couldn't get it. And I, like, okay, I knew what the map was a, was a hint. I couldn't get the first step, which is going to the far left corner. But then after that, I got all the steps. And then numbers two and three, I pretty much... I did my own exploring first, but then after that, I followed the playthroughs to see where to go and what to pick up because I missed picking up one or two things or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, it was fun. By the way, did you not have any voice actors in yours? No, I didn't have any voice actors. So I played the Mac OS 7 version of the game on my Mac OS 7 emulator. So I didn't have any voice actors. The audio was kind of choppy. And again, another thing too, I know you had said that the audio in this is fairly good. The sound and the music is good. But I just don't I just don't listen to music when I play games. I turn it all the way off. So I listened to it a little bit and then I turned everything off. I turned all the sound effects and all the sound off. I played it with it quiet. So I probably missed a whole bunch of sound. Did, did the sounds change as you played through the different parts? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's, I understand. Even on my phone, I turn all the sounds off. So I will say that they did create a re-release of this game. Mm-hmm. It's basically the Secret of Monkey Island Special Edition, which adds in voice actors and improved graphics. Mm-hmm. So all of those text boxes are also read aloud. So you don't have to be sitting there reading. You can actually just have it playing aloud. There were a couple of people who I thought were... So, for example, one of the ghosts was um, Rob Paulson. Rob Paulson, I know the name. And if you don't recognize his name, he was uh, Yakko from the Animaniacs. Um, mm-hmm. Guy Rush was Dominic Aramanto, I think his name is, who, to my knowledge, has mostly just done games. Mm. But yeah, that was the one who made me laugh the most was the fact that I was like, I know this guy. I know this voice. It's Yakko. <laughs> they had some pretty good voice actors who did it. Oh my gosh. I did not realize that. <clears throat> You'll be happy to know that the writing credits for this game, according to IMDb, include Orson Scott Card. Actually, I wrote that down. I saw that. In the ending credits, when you beat the game, it says that all of the swashbuckling... Does it say in IMDb what? Because in the ending credits... It says insults writer. Yep. He's the <laughs> swashbuckling insults writer. So all of those, you fight like, you know, you're a pain in my backside. Oh, that must be your hemorrhoid flaring up. All of those are his, apparently. Yes. And I will say... That is one of the greatest things in Monkey Island is the insult fighting. <laughs> there are actually, if you continue like searching out people, you can get a total of 16 different insults and responses. 16, huh? Let me see how many I have written down. I wrote down the ones I learned. I have 15 written down. So I tracked 15 of them. All right. So there must have been one that I just didn't get. If you list them off, I can probably tell you the one that's not there. Well, see, I only wrote like one word from them. All right. Let's see if I can do it. Make me puke. All right. You have the make me puke. So that was the, um, you you seem like somebody already has. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nobody's drawn blood. Uh, you run that fast. Yeah. <laughs> Manners of a beggar. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you felt comfortable around me. With me. Yep. Mm-hmm. A dog is smarter. He must have taught you everything he knows. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is the one. Words disgusting. You never learn them. Mm -hmm. it's the there are no words to describe how disgusting you are um yes there are you've just never learned them (laughs) match for brains i'd be in real trouble if you ever use them yep 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 tongue is sharper oh uh tongue is sharper i think tongue sharper is what the that is what the the sword master says sword master says and i wrote that in all caps and then you respond with feather duster that's the one you respond with feather duster yes so yeah, these are the ones I wrote in capitals in the same line. So sword and shish kebab mm-hmm. is what the other pirates say. And that's what threw me the first time I saw the sword master. It's like, wait a minute, she's using different swears. I learned all these insults. And then it took me half a second. I'm like, oh, I need to match up with what I've learned. So yeah, that was pretty cool. I did like that. So here are the original 16. You fight like a dairy farmer. How appropriate you fight like a cow. This is the end for you, you gutter-crawling cur. And I've got a little tip for you. Get the point. 
Uh, I've spoken with apes more polite than you. I'm glad to hear you attended your family reunion. Soon you'll be wearing my sword as a shish kebab. First, you better stop waving it like a feather duster. People fall at my feet when they see me coming, even before they smell your breath. <laughs> I'm not going to take your insulin sitting down. Your hemorrhoids are flaring up again, eh? <laughs> I once owned a dog that was smarter than you. He must have taught you everything you know. No one's ever drawn blood from me, and no one ever will. You run that fast. Have you stopped wearing diapers yet? Why, did you want to borrow one? There are no words for how disgusting you are. Yes, there are. You just never learned them. You make me want to puke. You make me think somebody already did. My handkerchief will wipe up your blood. So you got that job as a janitor after all. I got this scar on my face during a mighty struggle. I hope you've now learned to stop picking your nose. I've heard you are a contemptible sneak. Too bad nobody's ever heard of you at all. You are no match for my brains, you poor fool. I'd be in real trouble if you ever used them. And you have the manners of a beggar. I wanted to make sure you'd feel comfortable with me. <laughs> Those are the original 16. I say original because later they add more in the sequels and whatnot. Wow. Okay. Actually, in one of the games, you fight an Australian. Mm -hmm. And because no one can understand him, he is the best insult fighter. <laughs> That is actually how he keeps winning is because no one can understand him. And no one can come up with a comeback, huh? Yep. I think his name is like Ozzy. I like the humor of the cannibals too. Yes. I think they were nice to have at the end, especially. Because, I mean, yeah, things on Melee Island were fun. But then when you start talking to the cannibals at the end, they're pretty fun to deal with. Mm -hmm. I, if anything, I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't get to rescue... Oh, stink. The guy on the island. I forget his name now. What's his name? It's disappointing we didn't get to rescue him, I, I thought. Well, technically you can. Oh, uh, yeah. I was wondering. There is a small secret where you can get one of two endings. Well, one I heard that if you had lost all your crew, then he, Herman, Herman Toothrot. Yeah, Herman Toothrot. If you had lost all your crew, he would be your crew on the way back. Yep. But I was like, ah, well, I didn't lose my... When I learned that they had gone back to Melee Island... Yeah. Your crew find you right away. Yeah. And really what it is is, so, do you remember the puzzle where you have to launch a rock into the tree? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you aim the rock slightly differently, you can launch a rock into your boat, uh. which will sink the boat. The three people on your boat will survive that, but to get off the island at the end, then Herman provides a boat to help you get back. Uh, so the ending in that one, so you remember how at the very end of the game, Toothra is on the beach going, I sure hope my pirate friend hasn't left. Mm -hmm. In the other ending, your three crewmen are all inside the cannibal's tent saying, you know, I can't help but think that Guybrush was responsible for our boat sinking. <laughs> yeah. And if we ever get off this island, we're going to have to have a word with him. <laughs> so it is stuff like that. One of the things that I always found funny were things like Governor Marley is hyper capable to the point where every time Guybrush tries to save her, she's already saved herself. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's already got her soda ready. <laughs> you know, she's already all set for everything. And dealing with the marriage thing, having two monkeys stand on each other's shoulders in a wedding dress. That's how to get away with things. Uh, you you know, you try to break into a movie, it's two monkeys standing on each other's shoulders in a wedding dress, and wait, no. You know, I didn't put it together, because the whole time I'm like, this church is always empty at the beginning, right? Like, like I go in, there's nothing there, nothing to pick up, nothing to see, ever. I didn't put it together that, uh, you're going to meet him in the church in the end, or I should have put that together earlier, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the humor in this game is very fun. I love... For example, if you run around the island, there's all the passive-aggressive notes to the other members of the island. Yeah, from Herman to the cannibals, and then from the cannibals back to Herman. And then from the cannibals to... Oh, the ghost pirates. To the ghost pirates, that they're they're way too loud at terrible hours of the night, and reasonable people would be asleep at this hour. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I saw later on was that I too often got hung up on things like that church. I got hung up on the church. Like, I'd go in, there's still nothing here. Or I'd go into the alley between the store and the church. Is that where it is? The alley yeah. between the store and the church. And I was like, there's still never anything here. What? What's here? What? The only thing that ever happens there is the interaction with the sheriff. 
the sheriff, right? You learn from the sheriff something, which I don't even remember now, but... It was barely anything. It was, he's keeping an eye on you. Yeah, yeah. And then that's it, right? So I think I got hung up on things too much. Like, Or, for instance, I thought that the way that I was going to get the dogs to sleep was that I needed to give them grog. Because I had kept hearing that grog was the worst thing for you. <laughs> you shouldn't drink it. So I was like, well, that's going to be what I'm giving the dogs. And it wasn't until I had read a walkthrough that's like, no, you need the flowers on the cooked meat. Because I didn't even cook the meat. I had just picked it up. So I was like, oh, fine. I got to go find the flowers. And then I got to go cook the meat again. And then bring it to the dogs to put them to sleep. But I had thought that that grog machine in the shipyard was going to give me grog so that I could give to the dogs. Yeah. So I, I got hung up on that. And then I got hung up on the fact that I thought I needed a job at the end to get a line of credit. No. You just have to watch his hand movements on the safe. Exactly. Yeah, on the combination. Because you'd go back to the circus tent and, you know, he'd never let you in again. And I'm thinking, oh, great. Now that I needed a job, I'm going to go back to the circus tent and they're actually going to let me in. And I can say that I'm working for them. And then, boom, I'm ready to go. But, yeah, it never works. <laughs> so I would get hung up on things like that. And then I'm like, how come I can't get beyond this? Yeah, I don't have that problem because, again, I played this game so many times. Mm-hmm. I do have one question. Did you ask the guy about Loom? I did. I did ask the guy. That was pretty early on. Yes! I wanted to hear if you asked him about Loom. Because I tried. I talked to every single person in the scum bar when I first played. I was like, what are they going to tell me? Nothing. They're going to tell me anything. And then I got stuck behind an advertisement. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. An advertisement for another game. Did you mean the greatest? <laughs> it was made by the same people. Mm-hmm. And they just felt like Loom didn't get enough love, so they said, we're going to throw an ad in here. It was funny at the time. (laughs) Now, I'll have you play Loom. (laughs) Because you heard all about Loom. All about it. I think I I, uh, wasn't watching what he was talking about. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You didn't watch his wonderful explanation of Loom? Not all of it. Well, I'm sure I watched some of it, but then I think I was doing other stuff. Again, I do not blame you, but it is awesome. That is one of those things that I genuinely love simply because it is that ridiculous. In the game, I think my favorites were the cannibals. I think hmm. I think I enjoyed them the most. Um, and maybe Herman Toothrot. So I think maybe, you know, the whole phase three was my favorite. Mm. I think phase one and two, I was just a little bit more f- not frustrated. But it was more just trying to move through. Mm. And then Herman Toothrot and the Cannibals, while it was still moving through, they had more fun jokes as you're moving through, I thought. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I felt like the first part had plenty of funny jokes. But I think because by the time you reached point three, I think you had pretty much settled on, if I can't figure this out real quick, I'm using a guide. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) So you hadn't done that for part one and so you were more aggravated than you were yeah than enjoying the jokes along the way yeah because i mean i guess the training guy was kind of fun the guy who thought the parrot was the scariest thing was kind of fun yeah like there's a lot of really fun parts in the first part all of the insults are great yeah and there was definite pattern to it. Like, I could see where I was, you know, if you lost three in a row, you're out pretty much. Mm-hmm. But if you could gain one back, you'd gain some footing back. Mm-hmm. I so. love the insults. I mean, Stan. Stan, the used boat salesman. Oh, used boat salesman. Again, this was part of the time where I was being called away. <laughs> the used boat salesman. Talk to talk to talk to talk. I did finally learn that you could press escape and <laughs> get beyond all the talking. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And actually, one of the things I think... I stepped away for a second, and I think I ended up buying the boat for 4,000 coins. Mm. But because I had stepped away, I didn't see what he said. And then all of a sudden, when I came back, he was gone. I was like, where'd he go? And I didn't know what happened. And I didn't save it at that point. I went back to a previous save, Mm. and I went through it again, and I ended up buying the boat for 5,000, which doesn't really matter since it wasn't my own money, but... (laughs) But I think I actually bought the boat for 4000 the first time through. I just didn't know what happened because I hadn't yet freed Otis. I thought I didn't need to free Otis. Mm. I thought I needed to get the sword master and the hook guy and that I was good enough to go. So I went back to the docks and the boat wasn't there either because the walkthrough said, oh, the boat will just be at the docks when you're done talking to Stan. Yeah, no, you have to free Otis first. 
then I went through and freed Otis, and then then the boat was at the dock. Other things that I loved were like the troll who will only move aside with a red herring. Yeah, I forgot about that because I had actually beat that one early on. But yeah, you're right. That was pretty funny. The map that is not a map but is dance steps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There were a lot of really fun gags or little jokes around. Yeah, that were... and that's the thing mm-hmm. is it is a game that does not take itself too seriously. I mean, the very ending line, one of the things you can say is never spend more than $20 on a video game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that was fun too. <laughs> there was a bunch of good gags, bunch of fun gags. I mean, actually, one of the ones that made me laugh is when you go to the front of the monkey idol, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the statues there is of a tentacle because it is a tentacle specifically from Maniac Mansion was the first game. But then it had a sequel called Day of the Tentacle, Mm -hmm. where basically a a evil tentacle took over the world. (laughs) It's again another LucasArts game, Mm -hmm. another point and click adventure. Did you know that there is a way that Guybrush can actually die in this game? I didn't know that, no. Early in the game, he mentions that when the three pirates are talking about what are his qualifications for being a pirate, Mm -hmm. one of the things he says is, I can hold my breath for 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the water, right. Mm -hmm. So when you are in the water, if you sit there for over 10 minutes, he will actually stop holding his breath. Uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. And then all of the things like push, pull, open will change to things like bob, float, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. After he's turned to like a lovely shade of blue. And then if you die, you just come back? No, you have to reload a save. Uh. It was just one of those things that like it is so hard to actually like Guybrush is indestructible. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. You don't even die from the sword fights in the forest. Like I was thinking, I think I had some saves before I went into the forest to fight the sword. Because I'm like, one time these guys are going to kill me. But no, you don't even die there. Also, when you get captured by the cannibals, you can keep coming back if you don't have something to give them, and they'll just make the barrier in front of the door a little bit stronger. So it's a sight gag, but like at first, it's just like a bunch of spears. The second time, they'll nail up some boards. If you've gotten caught five times, they will actually have like a high-tech science door, that one that you would see in a military base. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So it's just another little funny sight gag that I love. Mm -hmm. Are you disappointed in playing it? No, I'm not disappointed in playing it. I think it was worth playing. Mm -hmm. That is what I like to hear. I really love this game growing up and I still enjoy this game a lot. The humor in it is just fantastic. It is somewhat obtuse in certain areas uh, where it does not explain as clearly as possible how to get past certain things Mm. so yes i do not blame anyone for the use of a guide um especially because i remember when i first played it i was a young lad and definitely needed a guide Mm -hmm. but it is a lot of fun and is definitely worth a play in my book yeah i enjoyed I'm, i'm glad you enjoyed it i do realize that Yeah, because it is more story-based and more like that, you have to give it a whole lot more attention than necessarily you have time for. Mm -mm. That's the thing is, for me, a lot of the games I play are very story-based, where you are expecting to either sit down and read a lot or regularly pause the game so that if somebody comes by and you need to run to the door to answer, you can pause it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I did find that there was a pause button later on. Yeah. But I'd forgotten. Every time I needed it, I'd forgotten. Which I think it was spacebar, right? I think it's spacebar. On a controller, they actually have the start button be pause. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I replayed it today on my PlayStation, because mm-hmm. I found that I could play the special edition on my PlayStation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So... I did not load up my classic versions on any computer. I just went, oh, I'll, I can play it on the PlayStation. I just need to load this up. I will say it is interesting what they choose to do with Secret of Monkey Island 2. Yeah, how can LeChuck come back? Come on, he really died. There are things, and I don't want to say anything. Yeah, I don't spoil it. 
because I might make you play it in the future. <laughs> Actually, no. I'll, what I'll do is if if I have you play another game in the future, I will try to make sure it's a game that you can put down at a regular basis. Mm-hmm, sounds good. So one that fits fits your style a little bit more. Me and all of the internet agree that Monkey Island is great. <laughs> because the internet always agrees with me. Fully. 100%. So I think that our next step for adding security to our school system is we need to add a roll a pirate. (laughs) Roll a pirate to get in. (laughs) To get into the school systems. That's where you select your temperature, right? Yeah. (laughs) Roll to get to your temperature and like, oh, you can get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Maniac Mansion was the first game, but then it had a sequel called Day of the Tentacle, Mm -hmm. where basically a a evil tentacle took over the world. (laughs) It's again, another LucasArts game, Mm -hmm. another point and click adventure. And that game was actually very interesting because you save the world by having three separate characters in different time periods interacting with each other Mm. to prevent the tentacle from basically taking over the world. It's a time paradox, like all good things. Basically. You have to get around the time paradox. Actually, it's very interesting. They have three time machines, but they're also basically portajons. So you, you are able to interact with each other by flushing items to other people in different time periods it's like bill and ted's oh yeah yeah you know bill and ted was one of the most consistent timeline movies it's a historical document almost the ship was this big (laughs) (laughs) sorry you said historical documents (laughs) yep yep yeah actually i was thinking i don't want to do cinderfella next time let's do something else Cinderfella is fun. I'm not sure it's a hill I want to die on. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think, yeah. what did I like about it? I liked that the stories flipped, but I didn't like how clumsy he was. Like, I think that Cinderella was a good story because she was pushed aside, mm. uh, but she was a good person, yet she was pushed aside. Cinderfella wasn't necessarily a good person. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but... But that definitely takes away from mm-hmm. something... Something that Cinderella has. Yeah. The problem I was thinking is it's the only Jerry Lewis movie worth watching, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, Nutty Professor's probably okay. I've never even seen that one. So are we not doing a Jerry Lewis movie? And yeah, maybe that's okay, actually. Maybe that's okay. It's too silly. But maybe it could get away with it back then because there was nothing else, right? So is it because of, like, there is so much that is not something that you can argue about or say is redeemable in today's current society? Well, yeah. I think it's more that... I liked it because the girl the girl was initiating things. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, that was kind of what I liked as a little kid as a little teenage boy, maybe even saying it that way. Mm. I almost think that's almost its only redeeming quality. And that's not enough to make it a hill to die on for me. So gotcha. it has a little bit of nostalgic value, but not enough. Yeah, I guess. And then there are things that we can laugh at in today's culture. But gotcha. at the same time, I just think that what I liked about it is not enough to redeem it. And not enough of a hill to die on. Mm. He's funny. And the whole scene with him in the kitchen is great. Edwin's good been trying to do this writing and then i also am trying to do a whole bunch of other things so Mm -hmm. trying to get everything trying to basically organize my my life Mm -hmm. and also trying not to spend a day basically freaking out about the color of my fingernails yep you're gonna be fine Am, am i really am i am i not dying no you're not dying yet although really Aren't we all just dying really, really slowly? Right. Slower than your fingernails are growing, Ryan. (laughs) Well, on that note, 